The Emperor's New Groove is an animated Disney film about an emperor who was accidentally turned into a llama during an assassination attempt by his advisor, Yzma. He meets a friendly peasant named Pacha, whose village he wants to destroy in order to build himself a summer getaway in its place. The two go on a journey to get Kuzco turned back into a human, Kuzco learns a lot about friendship and compassion along the way, and at the end, Everyone's totally cool with him because, in spite of being a tyrannical despot, was nice enough not to tear down their homes and destroy their lives. Political commentary aside, The Emperor's New Groove is a great film, and if you haven't already seen it, you probably should because it is hilarious. In this video I'm going to be reviewing the video game adaptation of the film released for PlayStation and PC in 2000 to coincide with the release of the film. I played through part of it as a kid and never actually managed to fully beat it, it was a little bit hard for me at the time. Now, I'm going to beat the whole thing and hopefully make a decent review of it while I'm at it. So, let's get straight into it. Let's start with first impressions. The game controls badly. I'm not sure exactly how to put it into words, all I can say is it's just really awkward. It's not so bad once you get used to it though. I mean, it's still more responsive than Super Mario 64, which was hailed critically as one of the best games of all time, so go figure. Weirdly enough, the controls were configured wrongly right after installing the game. The bindings for the up and right arrow keys were the wrong way around and I had to fix them manually. You hit X to jump, Z to attack and also to talk to NPCs, and A and S manually rotate the camera. It was great being able to do this, though, much like the controls, the camera felt janky and unresponsive a lot of the time. Pretty early on in the game, you'll also learn about Kuzco's other abilities, which include holding down the spacebar to charge, and pressing enter to enter look mode, where you can spit grape seeds to stun enemies or solve puzzles. You can also pick certain items up and carry them on your back, which is essential to passing many of the puzzles and obstacles in the game. Overall, the game has enough different abilities and mechanics to keep things from being monotonous or boring, so I gotta give it credit for that. Kuzco has 5 health points, represented by a crown at the top of your screen. If your health hits zero, you get a game over and have to start the level you're on from the beginning. Unless you have one of these pink plush toys called Wampies, in which case you only go back to the last checkpoint you passed. Normally you get these in secret areas throughout the levels. You can also find red crowns, which restore one hit point, and gold crowns, which fill your health back up to max. Red idols are used like keys to unlock doors, golden llama heads refill your charge bar, and grapes give you more ammunition for spitting. There are also coins, but your only incentive to collect them is that getting all the coins in a level unlocks a piece of low-res concept art you can view from the map screen. At the beginning of each world, the game plays a brief cutscene, which is actually a clip from the movie, but with a different music track dubbed over it for some reason. Clips are normally completely irrelevant to what's happening in the game, and in some cases even completely contradict it. It seems pretty clear to me that these are only in the game, so they could slap WITH, with REAL SCENES FROM THE MOVIE on the box. I mean, I don't have the box for this game, but I assume that's probably on there somewhere. Whatever the case, the PC emulator I'm playing this game on has a lot of trouble with these for some reason, so I normally just skip past them. Not like I was missing anything. So, about that main character. If you thought Kuzco was a grade A cock in the film, oh, just wait till you get a look at this game. Guy won't let you pass this big door? Why not smash all his statues and destroy his life's work? This kid's kind of annoying. Let's break his new toy horsey. Oh, and let's ram this guy face first into a fucking mountainside, just for the heck of it. And of course, Kuzco can't seem to stop repeatedly pointing out how much he thinks Pacha is fat and dumb and horrible. This game's writing manages to capture all of Kuzco's narcissism and douchebaggery, but with none of the nuance or character development of the movie. I mean, if you want to teach your kids the all-important lesson of being an asshole gets you what you want, then by gosh, is this the perfect game for your family. As you progress in the game, you'll come across sections where you touch a magic potion to transform into a different animal. In the first world, the village, you turn into a turtle to race against Kronk for a red idol. According to the game's credits, some of the actors from the film do their characters' voices in this game, including Patrick Warburton as Kronk, but this sounds suspiciously like Kronk's voice is brought to you by the vocal talent of discount Patrick Warburton. Good. Because if you had beaten me, then you would have won this nifty trophy. If this actually is him, then damn, sounds like he was really phoning it in. And Kronk's running animation is just too good not to mention. Once we've finished humiliating Kronk, this delightful segment is followed up by, you guessed it, a stealth mission. Wait, did you actually guess that? Because, you know, that'd be pretty impressive. Yes, that's right. In this section, you need to follow Parcher out of the village without being spotted. He turns around every so often, and if he sees you, you'll be sent to the last enclosure pen you passed. Naturally, you can just jump right out and give it another go. 
<laughs> yes, did you catch that Metal Gear reference? Y you guys get it. You get my gamer humor. <laughs> uh, yeah, funny. Anyway, after you follow Parcha, you meet up with Yzma, who becomes the game's first boss fight. She throws potions at you that you need to avoid. To beat her, you need to bait her into hitting the five markers on the floor, which opens the door to exit the level. After that's done, all Yzma can do is angrily jump up and down in impotent rage as you walk on through, finish the first world, and move on to the next, the jungle. So what does the jungle hold in store for us? Well, there's a statue we have to put together to drain some water to get past. The kid on the toy llama's back again, so naturally we break it again. There's a fish we have to hit with our grape spit to get it to blow a balloon until we can reach it, so we can grab that and attach it to a wooden platform to use that to float across a pit. And after that, we knock spiders down into freezing water to turn them into platforms we can jump across. The whole game's full of this weird imagination, and I gotta give it points for that. For all its flaws, I can't reasonably call this game boring or uninventive. The boss for this world is actually a segment based on a scene from the film, where you need to mash your jump and action buttons to run from hungry jaguars while using the arrow keys to steer. When I played this game as a kid, I could not beat this part on my own. I think in the end I only beat it by calling my dad in to help. Today though, I have my advanced gaming skills on my side, so naturally I was able to outrun the jaguars without a lot of trouble. After another real scene from the movie, we end up in the next level where you have to control a log as it floats down a river, which thank Thankfully isn't as boring as it sounds. This world lasts for four whole levels and took me about 20 minutes to get through all in all. As Parcha so keenly lampshades, this scene was much shorter in the film. As much as this line made me chuckle, it was kind of irritating how fixated the writers for this game seem on breaking the fourth wall every two minutes. I mean, I know they did it a couple times in the movie, but there comes a point where you're just overdoing it, and I'm pretty sure this game crossed that line. So, after beating Yzma's army of, uh, evil balloon animals, we find ourselves back in the jungle again. Except it's daytime now. This level's noticeably a lot harder than the ones before it. There are a lot more dangerous enemies about that won't be taken out with a simple roll or jump kick. You've got these wasps, which you need to dodge and then hit when they touch the ground. These big piranha plant looking fuckers that'll stop attacking you for a bit if you feed them grape seeds. And... Oh, 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 no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, this, this is making me a bit too uncomfortable, stop, st stop it, just, just stop, stop the review, I, I, I don't want to do this, I just stop. Hey everyone, welcome to my review of the games on the Emperor's New Groove DVD. Now, there is an Emperor's New Groove video game adaptation for the PlayStation 1 and PC, but why waste your money on that when there's a fully fledged game right here on your Emperor's New Groove DVD? A lot of people don't know about it, but you can get to it by going into the special features menu. There's a few things here, but what you want to do is go down and hit the option that says more. Then it's right there at the top of the second menu. Just press it and you're ready to play. The game follows the plot of the movie. Kuzco has been turned into a llama by his advisor Yzma, and you have to help him get back to his castle by answering trivia questions about the movie. Watch out though, if you get a question wrong, Yzma will start to catch up to you. If she gets you, you lose. Once you've answered the questions, you finally get the chance to turn Kuzco back into a human by combining three potions in the right order. It took a bit of trial and error for me, but after just a few minutes, it's done. You won. It's over. No more suffering. No more pain. No more horrifying wiggly dick vines. No, no, no more. Oh god, I still have to review the actual game, don't I? So, back to the jungle. The game introduces a new kind of stealth segment where you have to navigate through a maze without being spotted by the guards patrolling it. This is a pretty straightforward matter of figuring out their patterns of movement, waiting until their backs are turned and sneaking past them. Throughout the game, you'll find what the game calls secrets. Normally this is a hidden area with a few extra coins or some health. You'll know when you've found one because, well, the word secret pops up on the screen. These aren't always areas though, in some cases it's just a matter of completing a hidden task, like, say, beating a boss where you knock a guy off a tower, but instead of letting him lay unconscious in peace, you, keeping with the game's habit of rewarding you for being an asshole, give him a jump kick to the stomach. I kinda wish the rewards for finding these secrets was a bit more substantial. 
I didn't really care for collecting the coins just to get the concept art, and extra health's only really useful if you're missing any in the first place. In some cases, the so-called secrets are actually necessary to beat the level, which kind of defeats the whole purpose. I love finding hidden areas in games, but they've got to give me a reason to be interested in them or else it's all just kind of boring. On one level in the jungle, there are actually two separate secrets that lead to the exact same area. In the level after this, we get another transformation potion, this time turning us into a... Frog? As a frog, you have the ability to jump further on each successive jump, with the third jump being the biggest one. If you wait a short moment without jumping, your jump distance will move back down to that of the second jump, and then back to the first jump, indicated by what would normally be your charge bar. There's a few puzzles where you have to take advantage of this ability to hit buttons in the right order or within a time limit by timing your jumps to be the right distance for the job. It was honestly kind of satisfying to figure out. Look, look at him though, I, I'm... I mean, that's not a frog, right? With the jungle finally out of the way, we move on to the mountain, and the first thing we see when starting the first level is this little moment. These mountains are very dangerous. Stick with me. Sure. Nice footwork, Chucky. God, can we just... Can I just take a moment to talk about how fucking often this game throws jokes at us about Parcher being fat? I mean, sure, him just nonchalantly crossing the bridge as it falls down behind him is kind of funny. Sure, it's novel. But these snarky allusions to Parcher's weight are non-fucking-stop. There's about a dozen instances of this, and that's not even counting dialogue I might have missed, or jokes that just generally make references to him being slow, or lazy, or heavy. No, that's 12 whole instances of Kuzco just going out of his way to call poor Pacha a fatty. I don't know what was more grating, this or the constant fourth wall breaking. I mean, both of these things got a chuckle from me at some points, but overall, the jokes were definitely more missed than hit. Also, Kronk's back, and this time you get to challenge him to an ice skating battle. Because why not? After the mountain, the last three worlds to deal with are the city, the catacombs, and the lab. This video is getting a bit long, so I won't go into too much detail here. What I will say is that, like the worlds before them, these all introduce a ton of new elements that keep things interesting and dynamic. The biggest new introduction in this part of the game is the roller coaster segments in the catacombs, where you steer a cart to avoid falling off the tracks before you reach the end. These were a massive departure from the main gameplay, and I probably would have found them a lot of fun to play if they weren't such a pain in the ass. The main reason these were such a pain for me is these green tiles here. At first I didn't fully understand what they did, all I knew is that every time I hit one, I'd lose control and go flying off the course. Naturally I assumed these tiles were a one hit kill deal that made you spin out and fall, so I avoided them at all costs. But then I came to a section in a level where they were impossible to avoid no matter how hard I tried to. It wasn't until watching some other people on YouTube playing these levels that I realized the green tiles simply reversed your left and right steering buttons, and I was actually steering myself off the course in my desperation to avoid falling. Why didn't the game at any point think to tell me this? I mean, Parcher points out that the corner arrows make you turn every time you start one of these segments, so why not tell me what these weird green ones do so I'm equipped to deal with them? Save for that one issue, these sections were a pretty cool way of translating a scene from the film, much like the Jaguar boss in the river world from earlier in the game. Also, you get to turn into a bunny. You jump really high and collect carrots to open a carrot door. That's about it. Also, there's this horrifying thing. The final world in the game is Yzma's laboratory, where the climax of the film takes place. Even the guards transformed into animals are here as common enemies. All three animal transformations from earlier in the game make a return here, so you get a bit more bunny, turtle, and frog action before the game's through. Once you've escaped Kronk's comically oversized net, defeated Yzma's comically oversized hammer, and braved the also comically oversized final level of the lab, you're finally ready to face Yzma in a final showdown of epic proportions. Ah, Cusco, you're just in time. With this potion, I will transform myself into a hideous monster and end your rule forever! Are you sure you didn't drink it already, you old bag of bones? Just watch and behold the power! Yeah, yeah, enough of the dramatics. Drink it and let's fight! Prepare to die, Cusco. Will you please just drink the thing? Okay, but I'm warning you. Drink!
Uh, okay, what? I mean, fine, I get the bait and switch, but this just felt like a big letdown. I was all hyped up for a big boss fight, and what we get is... A mindless, hold right to win, 2D race to the finish. Seriously, you just hold down right and space bar to charge across the track and jump every so often, and once you get to the end, the game's finished. I mean, I'm sure I've played a more unsatisfying final boss at some point in time, but I'm hard pressed to think of one off the top of my head. When you're done, you get an ending cutscene and... Hey, Kuzco, you look... good. Uh, are you sure you drank the right potion, buddy? No one seems to notice Kuzco's horrifying malformed appearance. There's some dancing, some fireworks, the credits roll, and that's it. Oh, did you notice the door on the side in the final room where you grab the potion? Might be a cool secret, right? Let's go back, play through the final level again, and... Oh. You can't go in there. It's an invisible wall. Hooray! I'm not 100% sure what to make of the Emperor's New Groove game. There's a lot I liked about it, but a lot I disliked too. The controls are subpar, the graphics are average, but at the same time the level motifs are pretty creative and use a lot of cool elements. Bizarrely enough, the polygonal look of the PS1 graphics is actually pretty compatible with the overall art style. I can't complain at all about the soundtrack, it's actually quite good, with a lot of rhythm and attitude to it. Overall, it really captured the mood of the film and is pretty damn solid in its own right. I take the piss out of the writing trope but this game's writing isn't all bad. It's annoying at some points, yet manages to be charming and funny at others, so I can't really say it's terrible through and through. I think the most important thing to take away from this is that the game is fun. It never stops throwing new and unique elements and challenges at you, and in spite of its flaws, I enjoyed playing it through. If you're into PS1 era 3D platformers and you haven't played this one yet, it might actually be worth giving it a go. I'll leave it up to you to make up your own mind about the game, but as for me, I give it 3 stars out of 5. Also, I forgot to say so in the video, but if you haven't already done so, please feel free to subscribe to be notified when the next video comes out. Okay, thanks, bye.